episode one of Animation U. Today's guest is an artist, self-proclaimed weeb, Iron One Yasuo main, the man, the myth, and the legend himself, Bradley Williams. Sheesh, let's go. Hello, everyone. That's me. Yes, we have secured the Bradley Williams for this episode, and like just to start it off, just to kick off everything, we would like to learn a little bit about Bradley. So I got to ask, how did you start? as an artist like what was your inspirations or like what caused you to pursue this career professionally all right so like you said earlier i was straight out of the womb my mom put a pencil in my hand and i just started drawing on all the walls oh and oh, then uh-huh. <laughs> yeah true true story um but i think like my my early inspirations were definitely like me just sitting down in front of the tv and watching too much cartoon network and I think, like, a lot of the shows that I liked were on Cartoon Network. They were, like, Cars the Cowardly Dog. I still think, like, Cars the Cowardly Dog, a little spookiness, um, pretty fun. And it's still a big inspiration for me. And then I think towards my later years, I started, like, I mean, on Cartoon Network back in India, they started showing, like, Naruto. And I was like, damn, this is the coolest thing ever. And then from there, it went to like me looking up Naruto episodes on YouTube and like looking at AMVs. And then it's just like a spiral downwards. Like you keep like finding more and more things that inspire you in animation. And you're like, damn, this is what I want to do. And I think my, my favorite movie would be, or my biggest or most favorite animated film is definitely Coraline. And I think that was like a big reason why I was like, damn, I have to do this animation thing. I mean, that that isn't, a great film to choose but one thing i do have to ask is like was there a point you said like you got into these cartoons as a kid but was there a point mm-hmm. in like like maybe high school or something where you decided that hey maybe i should like try this out professionally or was this something that you knew as a kid that you wanted to do um all right so i think my school up until like i'd say sixth grade or seventh grade was just like art was art right as you go into the room And you kind of, they give you a piece of paper and some pencils and then you draw it. And then it's like, art art class is over. And I was, I was, I was always like slightly better than my peers at like doing art, maybe because I enjoyed it more, but I feel like those things kind of like fuel each other. Like you see you're good at it. So you want to do it more. And when you do it more, you get better at it. And then like you constantly improve just by like seeing your progress. And then, like, I think around, like, seventh grade or something, they kind of introduced, like, this tiny animation program where they kind of, like, I don't know, they kind of, like, introduce you to concepts like stop motion and 2D animation. And before then, like, animation, I don't think really solidified in my brain as, like, a career path. Like, I knew it existed, but I never thought, like, it's real, you know? It, it wasn't ever tangible until, like, my high school, my uh, middle school. Um, really like showed me that it was a path and even after that i feel like so this is the classic like indian kind of stereotype where it's like either you be a doctor or an engineer you know i think like most art students go through that regardless of the place they're in so it's like do i want to starve and be an artist and die or do i want a comfortable life being an engineer or something and so when I, so the way school systems are divided in India, like you go up to 10th grade in one school and there's a major exam and then uh, 11th and 12th grade is also like, it's called intermediate. It's like intermediate college. And that's when I had to kind of like make a decision. Am I going to study in India or am I going to go abroad and study there? And you kind of have to decide what you want to do as well. And I think wait, most wait, wait, people... Wait, can I, so like... So you're saying like this intermediate college would be the equivalent to like 10th grade in America? It would be 11th and 12th. 11th and 12th. Okay. Well, that, that is kind of crazy. Okay. Like, again, like putting that kind of pressure on like a 17, 16 year old to like decide what they want to do with the rest of their life is, it does sound like super crazy. Yeah. And I feel like over here, it's a lot more free where like you go to community college and you get to try things and you kind of do the general education courses. And there's still some wiggle room for you to like choose a path. But I feel like by 11th grade itself, it's like most people have already been like, 
I'd say kind of like strong armed into like either doing um, business. It's like economics. There's like an economics path or like a doctor path or an engineering path. You don't ever hear of like art school in India ever, or at least where I was from, which is Hyderabad. And um, it kind of like, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it, I think it would be better if like people that had more options, you know? Um, so I was, yeah. yeah. And if it, I think like the consensus was like, if you want to do art, you probably should not go and do it in India. Cause like the opportunities here are way more, um, just to do animation or pursue it as a career. Um, so yeah. Uh, so in 11th and 12th grade, I was kind of, I'm still a kid. So I, I, I think most kids can't really like, you know what, I'm going to be an artist and I'm going to make it happen. You know, you can't really do that because you don't know what's going on. You don't know anything about the world around you. And to you, you're, you're just like overwhelmed with fear, right? Like, what if I make this stupid decision here, try to do art, and then I can't do any, like, I can't make a career out of it, and then I'm screwed, right? So then I was like, all right, I'll make the smart decision and I'll do art as a backup, right? That's what most parents tell you to do. Just like, do it as a backup, you know? Do it later, just like get your degree first and then do an art thing. But I tried it, I did it. And I realized that that was just not very smart because like, I think creatives, I think you don't know it until you actually like try to pursue engineering or something that you're not passionate about. But like that, that shit eats you up. Like you, I, I, I can speak from personal experience. This is what happened to me. The more I did it, and the further I like went away from art and doing like engineering, like doing math, physics, chemistry, and just like, just for the sake of doing it, you know, for the sake of getting into college and seeing like how I was doing pretty poorly as well. Cause I think like an important part of like improving and progress is enjoying what you do. And when you kind of like hate what you do and then you don't even understand why you're doing it. Cause like, what is my motivation for doing this? I don't want to be an engineer in like 10 years. I don't want to be the greatest computer scientist ever. I don't want to make a computer. I, I don't want anything to do with it, right? But like, when you kind of force yourself to do that stuff, it's like, it, it's extremely draining on your like mental health. And so I kind of like got pretty depressed when I was there. Cause I was like, what is the point of my life? I'm just like doing things for the sake of doing them, you know? And obviously like, when you're kind of depressed and you're not doing well you're not going to make anything out of it and so like like a big failure in my 12th grade to like really understand that like this is never going to work out for me and I think my parents saw that too and I think I was like fortunate enough for like to be able to like change career paths after 12th grade I was my parents were like all right we'll try you we'll we'll see what this art thing is about and we'll like let you go down the path and I remember making that decision. I remember telling them, like, mom, dad, I, I really have to do this. Like, please let me do it. You know, I finally understood that, like, even if it was a giant risk, I still have to, I had to take that risk because yeah, I was going to be miserable if I didn't. Yeah. Like I could, I could try and fail, but I, I realized that like trying and failing, maybe it's like a privileged point of view, you know, like I had the opportunity to fail, you know? And I would, I would still had some confidence that maybe I wouldn't die on the street because I tried. But like, I'm glad I took that chance. I oh, think oh, like, yeah. If, yeah, I think if you're, if you're listening to this and like, you're unsure about being, doing it, just like take, take the chance first. And then if it, if you have the opportunity to, and if you have the ability to take the chance is my advice. I don't know, this went down a random route. No, no, no. Um, that, I think that was, like, very deep and, like, very personal answer. And, like, th again, thank you for sharing that. And I love it. Like, but, like, the experiences that you've had, like, I feel a lot of people have experienced that. Like, you know, going through art school myself and, like, talking to, like, everyone else who was attending the same university as me. It's always, like, oh, art should be a backup or art should be something like in your back pocket you should just major in something like like even me like i started off as biology and then i transferred mm -hmm. into like art but yeah i also want to touch on another thing that you mentioned was like having the privilege to fail and like us yeah. being art students is a privilege itself you know what i mean 
Like, yeah. We have yeah. the opportunity to learn to do what we want to do in life. And like, we had the choice to do that. And it's something to definitely Absolutely. value, which is why, yeah. like, you know, choosing a university where you want to like commit four years to is like very important too. And like mm-hmm. re- realizing yeah. that this institution that you're going to give yourself up to can have a po- both positive and unfortunately, sometimes it can also have a negative impact on your life and as a creative. Absolutely. Yeah. So when um, did you um come to the United States as a student? So good segue. So once, once I decided oh, that, you. like <laughs> I tried to feel like, um, I tried going to an art school in India. Um, it was okay, but I think like um, my dad was already like he works here. I mean, he used to like go back and forth between India and like California, and he he is the big reason why we were why I was able to come to the U.S. Like at the time, like I had I didn't really have a proper art education, right? So, and I don't think like people value how important it is to just like know the fundamentals of art. Back in India, it was just like, do whatever, right? And I tried to put together a portfolio with what I knew. And I think that, especially if you're aiming for like big colleges, like CalArts or Sheridan or Goblins or, you know, any of those, you already, it, it's my opinion that you already have a very strong foundation for art. Like you, you've, you've done the life drawings, the studies, you've had art instruction, people have told you what chiaroscuro is and just your drawing. I feel like most people just like, you know, just like separating light and dark, um, just like basic art things that which improve your art. And I think like without that foundation, like when I came here, I didn't even know, I didn't know anything, right? I was just like, draw a picture look pretty okay nice but there was no like foundation for me to to really judge what is good and what is bad you know like and that's like i know people say that's subjective but i i think objectively there's a way to judge art which which you can broadly categorize as good or bad like i, I agree i agree because like i think that exists for like every discipline but when it comes to art everyone's like oh no no good i'm like no there sure you can say that all art is good and maybe you like a certain type of art but there's an objective way to get better at art and so when i first applied i remember like the only exposure i had were like the big schools that like advertise all over the place so like when you say applied do you mean to like applying to art schools in general or just the san jose state in general so Oh, yeah. So I didn't immediately go to San Jose State. Um, I started, first I came to the country and then um, I learned online that, you know, you kind of have to do figure drawing. So the first thing I did was like, I looked for figure drawing places and I started sketching over there. And in the meantime, I was trying to like put together a portfolio. And I think the one school that I did apply to was uh, Sheridan, which I didn't get into. And I, I say that because like the only school that I knew that I could get into and which was um, fairly affordable for me was Sheridan, I think. So that's the one I applied to. And obviously I didn't get in. And then uh, while I was at figure drawing, um, one of like the people there who run the figure drawing place, he was like, hey, there's this uh, awesome community college nearby called uh, College of San Mateo. And they have this amazing professor named Noah Buchanan. And he was, he kind of was the one um, who really showed me what art can truly be. Like in my, in my mind back then, it was just like maybe a few cool Instagram artists and the rest was like, you know, those like art accounts on Instagram that kind of like do the rainbow kind of like wash or they like do a cutout of an animal and they stick it on a background, you know, like the, like a collage type deal. Um, it's kind of like the recycled type of art where you like, you follow the steps and you get this result. I don't know if you've seen, it's just like those common art accounts where they like, Oh, is it like, don't do this, do this. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay. yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. We'll throw up a yeah, little visual it, aid right here. <laughs> yeah um so it's just like you kind of you're not exposed to 
the what art could be and then like i go to his class and then he takes me to like um i forget what it's called it's called the palace i forgot it's in san francisco it's like this art museum and you see all these like amazing artists from from the past you know you see bouguereau i remember seeing that bouguereau painting this this girl with a um with a broken pitcher and it kind of like it turned my world upside down i was like okay there is a completely different height to art that i was not even aware of and maybe that's because i didn't research enough or maybe that's all i was exposed to but like once you start your art education you realize like you realize there's levels to this shit you know it's like you're a, <laughs> you're a way at the bottom and there there is so much to expand to and i think like parents don't understand that either they think like oh they're just going to give you a book and then you draw every day and then you and that's not really an education they don't understand that there there is there are things to learn even at art school like there's there's values and composition and color theory there's like so many things that and like and that's just like in the painting side then you go into animation and there's like all these principles and stuff yeah, so like they don't understand yeah they don't understand it's a whole discipline there's like so much to learn and master and they just think i i think this is cuz i thought that way too and i liked art and it's like oh they just going to i'm just going to keep drawing for 4 years and then i learned like okay there's a there's levels to this shit and there's a mastery that i can devote my entire life to and i will feel accomplished by the end of it if i stick to it what well, um yeah, i'm going this yeah. dope i'm going off topic but yeah okay um i mean we so can... back to sheridan right yeah Are you sorry like snowy day. so okay. okay so you applied to were there any other colleges that you applied to oh no so at the time i was like i only knew one that i knew i wanted that was sheridan it was sheridan. later yeah it was sheridan because like i felt like cal arts and the other ones were just way too expensive and so i was like okay sheridan seems affordable and it's like an amazing college it's like one of the best and it's not even in the US but that was the one i applied to um and so i started going to community college and from there is when i learned about state schools so the crazy thing is here like i think a lot of people don't know about state schools and at least you know from okay i can't even say from other countries cuz like in my country i was not there's like programs for children who go like who want to go abroad but i wasn't part of those cuz i didn't plan on going abroad cuz i planned on staying in india and doing engineering but like i think there's people who don't know that there are afford much more affordable options than calarts or some of the private schools that like charge you 60 70k a year to get your education and i think those are the state schools oh, 100%. and so i was yeah and i think it's important to like share this information with people is like yeah you don't have to spend 70,000 a year for tuition and so i i was in community college and that's when i start hearing about state schools and fun fact i went there just to take a few classes i was like okay i'm just going to take a few classes because i heard about it from my figure drawing class you know wait the, the state school like, hey, or the uh, community college so okay so uh, let me back it up so i was first a figure drawing i have no idea what i'm doing i just applied to sheridan i got rejected it's kind of bummed out and so i i was like okay what's the next step now and so someone at the figure drawing place the the owner was like hey there's this cool professor at community college and i was like oh that's cool um maybe i'll go take a few classes there just to you know get just to get some education while i'm still figuring out my portfolio and applying to places so i take two classes there and then i find out that i'm stuck there until i have 60 credits to transfer Uh, <laughs> oh okay yeah. oh so you thought you could yeah. just apply nah nah nah, nah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so like you understand like i knew nothing i knew nothing coming here i i was like i was just the dumb kid who was trying to like find his way through i was literally searching oh, in the dark oh okay so they got you doing like history english math again for those college credits right for like the general education well, yeah well i had oh, to yeah. like I, i thought i could just do like two and then because I didn't really even want those credits. I was just like I'll just do I'll take a few classes and then I'll start over at like a good college and do the four year program thing. They were like, "No, you now you got to you took two classes, you got to stay here and finish 
your 60 credits and then you can transfer to another college. And so while I was at community college, you know, and went to like some anime expos, I made some friends, you know, and the word of mouth was like San Jose State, right? I I heard about it from so many people. Oh, I, okay, so many is an exaggeration, but my professors were like, hey, do you know San Jose has a great animation program? We don't have an animation program, but if, if you want to take the next step, that's where um, you should try going, right? And I was also at this, like, it was some con, an anime expo or something, fanime, I don't know. And I was just like talking to tablers, you know, and I was like, uh, something about colleges started up and then she started talking about San Jose State. And I was like, okay, San Jose State University sounds like a really good place to be. And so then I go up on Google, you know, I'm like, wow, top colleges in the US. I was like, oh, San Jose State is like, according to the ratings at least, is like the best college on the West Coast, or not at least in California, to study animation, at least by the rankings, right? And then from there I saw like the CSUs were like kind of like right after them. It was like CSU, Fullerton, Long Beach, Long Northridge, Beach. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're from uh Long Beach, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um cool. So that's when I started like looking at these schools and that's how I found out about them. And then I applied to like the four that I mentioned, you know, Long Beach, Fullerton, Northridge, and San Jose State. Um, but really my school of choice was San Jose State because it was just like, it, it was not only word of mouth that it was like the nicest one, no disrespect to Long Beach or any of the other schools. But also, I also looked at the reels of the work that was on the internet and was available to view. So I don't know if it's like still representative of each of the colleges, but I think I like the work that came out of San Jose State the most. So that's why I kind of like picked it. And the crazy thing is like their, <laughs> their entry requirements, it wasn't even a portfolio, which was nice in a way, because like I said, I was, I, I was an artist who didn't really have any fundamentals until like a year. I wouldn't even say, a, yeah, about a year is when I started like, would it be a year? I don't know. So like two years, two years after is when you kind of start applying to those schools, right? So basically very short experience under my belt and no, no real good portfolio. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. all, all San Jose asked for is like, I say all, but it's like a really high GPA of like, it was 3.92 or something like that. And it was kind of like, that's, so my focus became making sure my GPA was like very high while I was at uh, College of San Mateo. And I managed to get into San Jose State, which was really good for me. But yeah, I was I was like, I was really hoping for San Jose State to take me. Uh, and I'm glad I got to get in. Yeah. Sweet. You know, the, the funny thing is like, do you have the questions out like with you right now? Oh, no. no wow. You, 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 I, okay, well, you answered like three of them like very naturally. And I appreciate that. <laughs> so okay, we're going to we're going to move on to the rest of the questions here. So okay. from like this point on, it's just probably primarily going to be about San Jose State as like a school. Mm -hmm. But did you like during your time at San Jose State, did you was there any particular like um, programs or clubs, extracurricular activities that you were part of that you feel like enriched your, your experience over there? Oh, yeah. This is this is uh, San Jose State's animation programs, like biggest. I think this is their biggest selling point, and they 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 really do sell you this. Like if you go there, where they're I don't know what's it called, the thing where they kind of like expose you to the program. I forget what it's called, but like this is what they kind of talk about. They're like the shrunken headman club. This is this is why you want to come here. If you come to San Jose State, it's going to be about the shrunken headman club, and it's basically this club. And it's it's basically the entire program, like the whole animation illustration program is a part of the Shrunken Headman Club. It is part of the curriculum. Technically, automatically enrolled in the club if you get into the program as an animation illustration major. Oh, wait, so I have a quick question. So it is a BFA program, right? The animation illustration track? Uh-huh, yes. So like you would have to apply to that if you were to start as an underclassman at San Jose? Apply for... 
to get into to be the BFA, BFA program? program? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. That's yes. To get into the college, you have to apply to one of the programs, and so I applied for BFA Animation Illustration, and the requirement for that would be like a high GPA, which is crazy because it's an art program, but they require great GPA for me, which is interesting. But yeah, they don't even look at your portfolio. <laughs> Okay, so so what I'm getting from this is the, what was it, the shrunken headman club? The yeah. shrunken headman club is like pretty. It's pretty big over there, and like, like yes. do you guys produce um, films or what? What do you guys do? So the shrunken headman club, it it's not a club to like. I think it's more of a community kind of club. So what we do is we like set up. I was part of the shrunken headman cabinet as well. So I was the graphic designer on the club for about a year, and so basically what we do is we kind of like set up events for students to learn and maybe like bond with each other, right? Because I think the big thing about uh, the Shrunken Headman Club or SJSU's animation program is like we focus a lot on community and building friendships, building relationships, and I think that's what. That's a big part of what the Shrunken Headman Club tries to do. Is one we bring in like guest speakers, who are sometimes alumni, and they come talk about their experiences. Or sometimes um, the program brings in, you know, studios who also come and talk about the opportunities they have at their studios. They give like advice, portfolio tips, stuff like that. Um, sometimes we do like events, like. We have the annual ShimCon, where it's like an artist's alley for all the students and sometimes the alumni. There was an there was a Shim prom, which is like this is the first time we did it was last year, and it was just like this giant dance where like people in the club got to like mingle with each other and stuff. Wait, that's so cool. And sometimes you know, yeah, sometimes we give out like we have the sh meetings. Um, what was that? I say sh meeting because like it's a shrunken <laughs> headman meeting, so everything becomes. <laughs> shim um we just put shim behind everything so it's like Wait, did you hear me saying sh meeting because it's like shrunken head man so it's like shrunken, shrunken s head shrunken head and then meeting. man yeah. yeah so so we call it sh meetings and that's where like you learn about the club um you know club events that are coming up sometimes we have students talk about like what they've learned so it's just like uh, usually talks, sometimes events of things that we do, you know, stuff like that. But it's mostly just to build a community. Like we kind of like we have merch and we have all these things that like we identify. Everyone in the club identifies as a shrunken headman. And if you see someone wearing a shrunken headman T-shirt or something like that, you go to them and you're like, "Hey, you went to you went to SJSU. You're a shrunken headman." And they're like, "Yeah, I'm a shrunken headman." It's like cool, and that's kind of like how you start a conversation, you know. It's kind of like oh, a... Oh, okay. So it's kind of like, yeah. I, I, you know, it's a weird word to say, but like kind of like an art frat. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 like a cult. <laughs> a cult? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like it does have slightly cult vibes, but, you know, we don't do anything bad. We are yeah. very there's no like There's no like weird hazing or like... Yeah, like, yeah you know, no, like, nothing. No like rushing, that. no fees or anything. Nope. Oh, we, we do ask for like a $5 fee just to like support the club so we can bring in guest speakers people who you know industry professionals upkeep okay. the club you know okay, like do you things know, five, five for the students it's, it's whatever yeah in exchange for like tickets to sh was it shprom for... yeah uh shimprom, shimprom and like shimcom shimcom oh, so it's, <laughs> yeah it's just like shim everything <laughs> yeah okay so, wow Small club. Yeah, a little, little culty. No, I'm not going to No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but um, yeah. another thing I wanted to ask was during your time at San Jose State, did you take any, like, third-party supplementation classes? Like, I don't know if you've heard of schoolism, like, classes okay, like that. Yeah. Like, have you ever taken a class like that? Like, outside of your university? I'm going to say no. So, I was going to. So, this was the semester where... Um, so, I'm, I'm in my... Okay, let me just preface this by saying um, the program is a five-year program, um, and there's no like nice, the same, music... at, same at Long Beach. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. I thought the rest was four years, but yeah. So it's a five-year program, and like even if you're a transfer student, you still usually have to do the five years. I wait, wait, wait. I'm graduating. 
you yeah. have you have to do the five years on top of like transferring yeah like straight like another five years yes oh wow in most situations oh yeah. i did not know that that's crazy yeah it, it was it, yeah it turned my world upside down too when i first heard about it oh shoot because like it's I, I think it's just the way the program is structured is like you have to take one class before you can take the next one right ah, okay. um and so like and they only offer during like certain semesters so you're kind of like trapped in like that five-year program and i'll just say that like i think you need three years is just not going to be enough if you like transfer in you're not going to get what you need to like survive in the industry like i i am now i finished three years i'm in my fourth year i managed to like do the program in four years because like i showed like i think i showed that i was capable of like surviving even if i did get out in four years oh, yeah, and i thought you going through so, the trenches huh <laughs> yeah so like um if you can it's not it's not common it's pretty rare that you get out in four years but yeah i think it, they'd kind of do it for your own good because like most people are just not ready in three years I, i'm not ready and i've just finished three years right so i think it makes sense what they do um it's not fun like i know it's like i just did two years in community college and now you want me to do five more years i'm not trying to be a doctor you know but i think like the education you get is pretty worth it and i, I will also say this like art school i think i should have said this way earlier but art school is very little about learning i think it's more about making connections making friendships and learning how to be an artist, be part of a community. I think that's the important stuff that you get at art school. I think that today, no matter what you want to learn, if you want to learn it, it's on the internet, right? And oh, yeah. I think what you need, what you don't have, is just like those, those small community moments. You know, you go out for a party after an event and you meet all the cool alumni and they're talking to you. That's what you need. You need like, the friends who are like, hey, man, you want to work on your portfolio together? And then you, like, help each other and you improve your portfolio. You, I think what's important about art school is not what you're learning. It's not the material that you're learning. It's, like, the time you spend there, the time you create bonds, and just, like, the time you spend, like, making projects with people, too. And that's what I was going to talk about is, like, I didn't do any of these extra outside activities because... I, I I feel like I'm a self-starter kind of, and I like I like making things, right? So I, I remember like for two degrees Celsius and this other book I made, like Arborea, it's just like, I got up one day, it was this summer, you know, and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to make a film or okay, I'm going to make a concept art book. And the thing that is great about art school is that you already have a ton of friends who you can go to and be like, hey, you want to make this thing with me? And they're going to be like, oh, yeah, let's do it and then you guys make a thing together and it's like you don't have to pay them you don't have to learn about them you don't have to like you you you, you they're already there they exist and they know about you because they've seen you in their classes they trust you and so it's like it's just an amazing opportunity to collaborate with people and i think that's the important thing about art school um so that's when i was yeah so when i was in in my summer break, like I didn't do any supplemental classes. I don't think they're bad. I think you should do them if you're like um, not a self starter and maybe you find it hard to keep yourself motivated to keep doing your art. Um, but I think like if you can and if you like doing that kind of stuff, it's just like it looks equally good, if not better. If you if you've just directed a film in the summer, you know, or just like made a project on your own, it's like. It, I was a director for this film, you know, it's like, that's a big deal. So, uh, and it's like, I think it's, I, I believe in just doing things, right? So like, if you take another class, you're learning a lot for sure. But I think there's nothing more valuable than just like making the film, just make it, you know? And then you will learn more than you ever will and by taking any class, yeah. That's my thoughts on that. <laughs> I don't know if I answered the question. No, no, you did, you did. <laughs> 
but um you know like you know you're talking about all this social stuff um i think like the social climate at a school is very important so like for my next question it's kind of, it's kind of going to be about that like general community mm-hmm. questions about the school okay so yeah sure like did you feel included at your school or like did you feel left out like how did how did you feel uh so i started out as a transfer as you know so i already didn't know anyone like i think like most people when they get into college they're like they kind of graduate with their high school friends and so they have their little groups already and i didn't really have that i didn't really know anybody um so I was pretty alone for the most part when I started out. And I was also a commuter. So I think like commuters have a big disadvantage because like you can have to drive to school. So you're always like, and it was like a pretty long commute. It's like an hour uh, journey. So you kind of like have to drive to school. You don't really stay on campus a lot of the time. So like on the weekends, you aren't really mingling with people. And then, like, you kind of leave early because, you know, you have to get home. Uh, so I feel like there were a few barriers for me to, like, actually make strong friendships. But I think as time goes by, you know, you start seeing these familiar faces um, in your classes. And I think COVID hit. And ironically, oh, yeah. COVID actually helped me make friends. Because, like, I was too scared to, like, walk up in person to a big group of people and talk to them. But, like, when COVID hit, it's, like, everything's on Zoom. So I just, like, you know, or Discord. And I'm just, like, DMing people and just, like, talking to them, like, typing behind my screen like a little rat. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, a little gremlin, you know, just, like, hey, you, you, you hey, know, what, just what you doing? saying what stupid doing? things in class. Yeah, just, like, saying stupid things in class, you know, just, like, making jokes, you know. It's much easier when when everyone is separated and then you can, like, you have ends you have opportunities to talk and people like listen to you so that was good and so like you slowly build friendships with the people you see around you know classes and i think by my third year i i joined like a leadership position as a graphic designer and then like kind of like the whole program knows you and so like people start like talking to you and they they kind of know you and Maybe, like, you have a reputation now of being, like, friendly or something like that. So people are more comfortable being around you. And so, like, I feel like I started out as a loner. I also met my girlfriend in my first year. So I wasn't a total loner because, like, I had I had one friend, and that was my girlfriend, and she was great. And she yeah. really helped give me her, out. Give her a quick shout-out. Yeah. Shout-out to Lauren. She was my, like, number one support. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thank and you, Lauren. she got me to my first year. Thank you, Lauren. Yes. But then my friend circle grew. And I think you need to grow your friend circle if you want to take uh, advantage of, you know, everything that college has to offer. If you want to collaborate with people, if you, in fact, if you want to be in this industry, you need to be able to collaborate with people. 100%. A more accurate statement has not been said, I think. (laughs) But like, yeah, Yeah. uh, you know, like being a part of the pipeline and like learning how to communicate and collaborate with others is such a key skill that like, you can't really like you know like there's no i don't know about san jose but i do know at long beach like there is no class where it's all like oh work together well except okay maybe there is one there is there is actually one never mind but like that is such like a like a soft skill set to have to be able to work with others and collaborate efficiently and effectively yep i also will say that in san jose state there aren't like too many opportunities to really like they don't like make you work on big projects from like your first three, four years, like maybe there's one or two final projects that you tend to work on with other people. But that that's the initiative thing that I was talking about earlier where you like, mm-hmm. in the summer you find people or like, it doesn't even have to be in the summer, during the school year if you have time. And maybe there's a film festival. Like I did like the, the CMF and two degrees Celsius thing. Oh, sorry, the campus movie fest thing, which is like, make a film in a week. And it's like, you have a deadline, you have one week, and you have to make your film within that week. And it's like, hey, guys, do you want to make a film in a week? And it's like, okay, it's not a huge commitment. You're not blocking out time for a year or a month. It's one week, right? And then it's just like everyone is focused for one week. They die for one week because they're, like, doing two projects. 
they're, I mean, they're doing the, the, the movie project and they're also like doing the classwork. So yeah, you die for oh, a week, yeah. but then you come out of the week and you're like, I made a film, you know? So yeah, if plus, you can do that, yeah. if you can like, yeah. Like, plus you made a film with, like, a bunch of very like, you know, like cool people, like, and then, you know, like you become friends with them and then like, it just keeps growing uh -huh. and growing. And like, you know, yeah. there, there is research out there that like, if you go through like really like tough or like traumatic events with people, like you, like scientifically, like you guys will get closer. So like if you work hard yeah. for something with a team, you will get closer a hundred percent. Yep. Definitely. I agree with that. Yeah. So another question that I do have is the, did you feel that San Jose state, like the student body, or at least those within the animation program? Did you feel that it was competitive or like supportive or you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I think like from day one, the professors put a strong emphasis on like, don't be competitive with your peers. And it's literally don't, don't be competitive. It's not like maybe you shouldn't be competitive and try to like learn from your friends. It's like, don't be competitive because, and I think it's right that you should not be competitive with your direct peers. Like, be competitive with the schools you're, like, maybe competing with or, like, be competitive with the standard of the industry out there. But don't be competitive with the people you're working with because you guys are trying to get to the same place together. And sure, like, you can be critical and you can look at your friend's work and you can say, okay, they're better than me at this. Why are they better? And then you learn from them. But I think, like, it's more important that you collaborate with them and. I think the the collaborate is more important than the competitive when it comes to your direct friend circle or your direct artic, artist circle, the people around you that you work with. Because, like, it's not going to do you much good to just, like, com keep comparing yourselves to your peers. That's another thing that I think is, like, I learned over time, like, I started out being, oh, I want to be the best. I want to show everyone oh, yeah. what, who, who I am, you know? And then, like, you learn that it's just, like, a toxic mindset. Like, it's it's great. I, I will say that, like, when you're very competitive, you grow very fast, too. It's like, you're learning. But I think that you can be competitive. Just don't be competitive with the people who are around you, who are, who are like, trying to get to the same place as you. Don't try to, like, fight them, you know? It's like, you learn from each other. You help each other grow. And you guys can be competitive with, like, the industry out there, you know? There's plenty of like talent that's like way above anything you'll see in school and you can like aim for that. Try to be competitive with that. But like with your own friends, like you're trying to get into the same studios, you know, you're trying to get into the same workplaces, you're trying to get into the industry together. And like you if if I get in or if my friend gets in, I don't want them to be like, Oh my god, Bradley's such a pain in the ass. He's he's, he's <laughs> he has such a toxic mentality. He's god, always... He plays Yasuo, dude. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, really exposing me like that. But yeah, it's like you, you want them to be like, damn, Bradley is such a fun person to work with and I really want him on this team. We're gonna laugh and we're gonna make fun things together and it's gonna be great. So please, like they they probably tell their employee, like, this guy's great to work with, man. We're gonna have a blast if you bring him on. And he's a great worker. As opposed to like you guys aren't really like helping each other. They're like <laughs> I learned this new thing and now you can't learn about it either. It's kind of like a destructive thing because like you're, you're trying to be better to such an extent that like you're kind of like destroying each other's abilities to grow from each other by like learning from each other. Oh yeah. So you just want to be careful of that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm like doing this whole art guru thing. Like, <laughs> this is No, I mean like I feel like that sentiment is like the oh, I'm going to be better than everyone else. It's more prevalent in like, you know, early art students who like haven't really experienced like working with their peers or like you know like being in an educational space like that because yeah, yeah. I've heard like you know I've heard it all like people like walking up like people at my school like my friends would always tell me like yeah yeah he walked up to me he's like oh yeah we're competition and like yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be better like Ew, it's, it's, it's gross you know what I mean yeah it's weird don't do that <laughs> yeah like you so know weird. instead of you know trying to compete with people you just collaborate with them you know like get to know them and first for oh this is very important this is like one of my philosophies too it's all like like be genuine like don't be friends with a person just because like you think they'll get you a job you know what i mean absolutely yeah. yeah i mean 
it, and you, I don't think you can. Like, it's like it's so obvious when someone's like sucking up to you just to like. Oh, well, you're so like, good, bro. You're so good, dude. So, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I and I think those genuine friendships happen when you like, like, like we said before, like working together and just like going through hard times together makes you like makes your bond stronger. And then it's like, like I wouldn't like if you if you just walked up to me and like, oh man, you're so great. Or, I wish I could be like you. It's like. That doesn't not that doesn't make me want to work with you in the future, you know. You're just like, okay, thank you for complimenting. That's not a friendship. You're not building a friendship like that. So don't like suck up to people. That's not what it's about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Try to be try to be social. You know, like yeah, just, like be friends. But genuinely you know, try to be friends. Yeah. So you know, like we're talking about projects. I'd like to quickly touch on like the two projects that you worked on: the two degrees Celsius and igniting change. So I watched yeah. both of them. Very wonderful films, mm-hmm. by the way. And I was just wondering if you could talk about your involvement in those two things. Like, what were you, what were you doing and, like, how they, they were organized and conceived? Cool. Um, so both of them were for this event called Campus Movie Fest, which is, like, this big... I don't, I don't know if it's big. Which is this college thing that happens, like, every Honestly, year. Honestly, I, I, I did not know it existed until, like, I went through your stuff. And I was like, oh, what is this? Yeah. Is that like a it's San not, Jose not, thing or uh, just like every college thing? I, I think it's like every college thing. Um, uh-huh. You can be anywhere in the U.S. and like submit. It's just like film competition where like you get together and then you produce a film in a week. And so I, I was not aware of it. It's just like I was just a kid, you know, in school. I think I was in my first or second year. I think I was in my second year when Igniting Change was happening. Um, one of my seniors, they were like, hey, we need people to work on this film. If you're interested, let us know. It's a one week thing. I was like, okay, one week. Hell yeah, I can I can do a thing for one week. Let's do it. And I, man, when I was in my earlier stages, like I wanted to work on everything. So <laughs> I was like, shit, That's a fair I'm mindset. gonna try and, you know, yeah, cause like, you're literally scrambling for opportunities right you don't understand how to like pace yourself or like if you're doing too much or too little so you're just like anything i need more on my resume you know so i'm like okay igniting change um so i got on like i asked they were like can you send me your animations um and some of your art and i sent it and they're like oh hell yeah we'd love to have you on and so that's how like i i got on the team and then I think I did like the character design for the main character. And then I did like um, this animated shot with like seven characters <laughs> for 10 seconds. It was like oh a nightmare. <laughs> I, but it was like money shot, you know? So I was like happy to have it. And I think like it turned out pretty nicely. So um, yeah, that was my first experience. And like the amazing thing about this experience was like, we happened to win like a lot of things within the competition, like the within the CMF thing. And we even got like prize money. And like each of the Ooh. people, each of like yeah, there were like twenty people on it and like each of us got like three hundred dollars. And I was like Wait, three hundred? Wait. Yeah, three hundred. And I was like, we get paid? Hell yeah. So yeah, a little, little cheap. That's <laughs> yes, sir. That was my first experience getting paid for like animation work, you know, making movies and stuff. And I was like, damn, this feels good. And so that's why I like I want to do it again. And so this time around, um, the person who like organized it before was kind of busy. They were in the final year of BFA, you know, so they had their own shit to focus on. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna just do it. And this is what it comes back to. It's just like, just do it, dude. Just make the film. Just like ask, and you will not regret your decision. So I, I was just like, I don't care what happens. I'm gonna make a film in a week. And so it's just like, I started Hell asking yeah. people like, hey, guys, you want to do this thing with me? And then I got a bunch of people on board. And then we made a film. So I directed, I did storyboarding. That was my first directing experience, my only one too. And yeah, I, I think it, it went well. We won like awards and stuff. So, and I think it's, I think there's like a second round of like prizes or whatever, where the prize money is at, which is still yet to happen i think oh so um, they haven't rolled but... it out yet. <laughs> no they haven't now you you got it but... right? you got it 
<laughs> I hope so. Uh, it'd be nice to get everyone paid again <laughs> if we do win something, you know. But yeah, it's just fun. It's just like even if I don't get paid, man, it was it was fun just making a thing with people for a week. Like I remember finishing, and I was like, I was sick to my stomach. I died. Um, Jesus. But then, like, <laughs> uh, yeah, we like submitted it at the last minute. It was like eleven fifty nine. Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> I mean, oh wait like, that sounds so stressful like oh my dude yeah. that like what have you missed it's like yeah like, oh like, my god sorry guys it didn't end up getting submitted my fault yeah it's like jesus i would have yeah i was sick to myself i was like i should never be a director <laughs> but i want to do it again <laughs> Just you want to like... you want to um, shout out some of the crew real quick uh the crew so i think my co-director her name's megan Graham and then Lauren, who was my girlfriend, was also like production. Thank you, Lauren. And thank you, Lauren, again. <laughs> I don't know. It was like a big team. There's like 20 people. But yeah, I think those were the lead names, I think. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. So that was actually uh, the last question. Did you have, like, we're going to wrap it up. Like, did you have any advice to anybody considering San Jose State and like any anything you'd want to say? Sure. I don't think you're going to regret Like, if you come to San Jose State University, first of all, your mentality in any art school should not be like, they're just going to teach me how to do art and I'm going to do it and then I'm going to get a job. Your mentality should be, I'm going to go there and I'm going to make connections. I'm going to make friendships. I'm going to make projects. I'm going to make art that I love. And I'm going to get good at it. Be like, don't, don't expect your, wherever you decide to go, don't expect them to like, you know, give you a job. Because that's not how that's going to work. I think you need to like really put in your own effort and just like make time to make your own art, um, make it with friends, try to build those friendships. Um, and San Jose State, I think, like has a great community, a really positive community. It's it's really a good place to make friends. The environment is so non toxic. What is the opposite of toxic? It's it's quite welcoming. It's wholesome well wholesome hell yeah wholesome like that is like one of that is the most wholesome and welcoming place i've ever been and i was fortunate enough to get into yeah so i don't think you'll go wrong if you go to san jose state it might take a while for you to find some friends but once you do man it's like it's a great experience and you will learn a lot and there are definitely opportunities out there for everyone I'm not going to say that you're going to get a job if you get into San Jose State and you go there and do your five years. I don't know if you're going to get a job. But if you, I think that if you put in the work and you do your thing and you're constantly improving and you're making projects with friends, I think that you, you probably will. That's my opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that, you know, that's a great way to end it. Before we go, though, where, where, where are you, um, where are you going this summer? Like, uh, you're, you're doing something this summer, over the summer, right? Uh-huh, yeah. If I'm ever, I'm going to see the world's biggest, deepest thing. Oh, no, I was talking, <laughs> I was talking about, I was talking about Titmouse. Oh. <laughs> I was, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the Grand oh. Canyon's nice, but. I'm embarrassed. It's, uh, all right. <laughs> I was like, hmm. He's asking for a summer vacation. That's interesting way to end this animation podcast. That's nice. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be interning as an artistic intern at Titmouse. Yeah. Woo! Woo! All right. Let's I'll add go. Some traffic noise to this, but um, yeah. Again, thank you to Bradley. You're gonna do great over at Titmouse, and thank you for listening. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you for listening. Whoever's listening. I believe in you. You're going to be a great artist. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Always so wholesome. Yeah, actually, yeah.